This Toro mower has a very serious issue with the engine, and I hate to say it, but it's not the first time I've seen it from this engine brand. And before we can do anything else with this mower, we need to fix it. Otherwise, this engine is going to overheat and lock up or even possibly make a new inspection window in the side of the engine. In today's video, we look at this Toro mower and the problem is that it has an oil leak somewhere on the front side of the engine and it's a pretty good leak too. Unfortunately, there's no way to patch this leak so it means we're going to have to get our hands dirty trying to fix this one. Now, I'm going to try and repair this mower. However, it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. Now, we're only going to mention what these other options could be. We don't have enough time to look into them. But if you need more information on these options, you're welcome to ask as many questions as you need to. While I was moving this mower around, I also realized there's something wrong with one or both of the front wheels. But before we even bother with them, we need to see if we can fix this leak. Otherwise, there's no point in fixing them, and this mower will then be used for spare parts. Now, in the last video on this mower, we filled the engine with used oil, knowing that it had a nasty oil leak. Now, this made it easier to see where the oil was coming from, and it also gave us an opportunity to do a test start. And despite the oil leak, it turns out this engine sounds really good. As you can see, the oil is coming from the front of the engine, and from past experience, it's probably coming from the sump gasket, which unfortunately means we need to drain all the fluids from the engine so we can open it up and see if we can fix the problem. Now, there wasn't enough fuel in the tank to siphon, but there should still be some in the carb. I don't want the air filter to get soaked with fuel, so I'm going to remove it. Of course, this means I get to drain all that nasty old oil I had to put into the engine in the last video. Now, I could have used fresh oil, but with the price of everything going through the roof, I simply didn't feel like it. Now, with this mower on its side, I'm also going to take off the blade. It's surprising just how much rust is under here. I have to wonder if this mower was partially submerged in water at some point. While I'm thinking about it, I'm also going to disconnect the brake cable from the engine and also the pull string from its guide on the handlebar. Now once the oil is done draining, I'm also going to replace the dipstick so there's no chance of spilling any of that leftover oil on me or the grass. I'm not going to remove the engine just yet. Instead, I'm going to remove the belt guard out of the way and then try to remove the blade adapter. Now the adapter slides over the shaft for the engine, but sometimes they can get rusted to it, making it very difficult to remove. If that happens, you'll need to use a puller to get it off. Now to use the puller, I'm going to put the bolt back on and leaving it about an inch away from the adapter. Then I'll use the puller to grab the adapter and brace it against the bolt. If you need one of these, there should be a link in the description. Unfortunately, after removing the puller and the bolt, ours is still not wanting to budge off the crank. This time, I'm going to get a bolt or a screw that's several inches long instead of using the bolt, which is only a few inches long. This should give us enough pull length to get the adapter completely off the shaft. As you can see, just like the rest of the mower, the adapter has rust inside it too, so we'll need to clean that up later on before we install it back onto the shaft. Once the adapter is off, I'm going to remove the rest of the engine bolts and separate it from the mowing deck. At this point, we can safely work on the engine on the table. The first thing I'm going to do is drain the fuel out of the carb since we weren't able to drain a lot of the fuel out earlier. Once that's done, I'm then going to clean the bottom of the engine and there's a really good reason why. The most important reason why is because I need to be able to find all the bolts I need to take off to remove the sump. The second reason is for filming. Even if I can see what I'm doing and taking off, I need you to be able to see it as well. Otherwise, it's not going to help you. Now, this part isn't typically this dirty, but since it's been leaking quite a bit of oil for some time, a lot of dirt is collected on it. Now, it's not spotless, but it's a hundred times better than before, which is going to make it a bit easier to see what I'm doing. Next, I'm going to remove the bolts that hold the sump to the engine. If you want to use your pressure washer to clean the dirty part of your engine, that'll be fine as well. Luckily, the bolts are all the same size, so there's no need to keep them organized. Next, I want to tap around the sump to help get it loose from the block, but things don't go quite as planned. Once the sump was loose, I then tried to pull it off the engine, but I could only move it so far before it got stuck. I tried for several minutes to separate it, but the sump was stuck to the crankshaft. I then got desperate and used the puller to help separate it. Now, to avoid this issue, I should have used some sandpaper to help clean the shaft of rust from the adapter before trying to pull the sump off. 
So the gasket is in pretty rough shape to do a proper inspection, but the leak is around this area. However, it's hard to tell just looking at the block. Now looking at the sump, the leak was basically between this blank area and this hole. There's nothing wrong with the casting of the metal and none of the bolts were loose, so the gasket simply failed. I think if I replace the gasket, it should stop the leak, and the first step is to remove the old one. There are a few places where the gasket was stuck to the metal, and we need to make sure we get as much off as we can. To help get it off, I'm going to use some old gasoline. Now, if you've not seen my other videos where I reassemble an engine, you may not like what I'm about to do. Next, I'll remove what's left of the gasket on the block, and it's the same story here as the sump. I'll remove the larger pieces of broken gasket and then soak the remaining bits with gasoline to soften them up. After a few minutes, I'll then come back and try scraping off what's left of the gasket. Now, there are better ways of doing what I'm doing, and if that's the way you feel about it, use your own technique. So am I worried about damaging the gasket surface using a steel scraper on it? And the answer is sure, but when you see how I overcome it, it'll make more sense. After I get all the old gasket off, I'll then check to see if there are any loose bits and then move back to the block and do the same process there. Now you can use a different type of solvent other than old gasoline, but this was free and taken from a project generator several videos ago, so I needed to find a use for it. After that's done, I'll then clean the surface with a paper towel and some brake cleaner. Now looking back, I probably should have used something that wouldn't leave any lint on the surface, but it won't matter too much. I'll then do the same process for the gasket surface on the sump and then begin the process of putting it back onto the engine. So if you hadn't guessed, I'm going to use a gasket maker to help seal the sump back to the block, which I know some people have an issue with, but when you see how I put it back together, I think it'll make more sense. Now I do apologize, but this tube of gasket maker has been with me for quite some time, and I've used it on multiple occasions. I really do think they make these tubes with the thinnest material as possible, that way they break, causing a leak, and after the first use, you'll be forced to buy another tube. After smoothing the messy beads I put down, I'll then use the same method for the sump. Now the first application of gasket maker on the block should seal fairly well, but to help ensure it's not going to leak, I'm going to put a layer down on the sump as well. I also forgot to mention, but I'm only putting a thin layer down and not a heavy one, otherwise this could get really messy. So I forgot to mention that I tried to clean off as much of the rust from the shaft as I could to make the installation easier than when we took it apart. If you want to, you can also put some oil on the shaft to keep from damaging the oil seal on the sump. If you wanted to replace the oil seal, this would have been a great time. Our seal wasn't leaking, so I'm going to reuse it. Once the sump is sitting flush with the block, I'm going to start the bolts by hand. Make sure you do not have a gap between the two mating surfaces because that means something is not lined up. Also, I'm not going to tighten the bolts just yet and you'll see why here in a little bit. Once all the bolts are making contact with the sump, I'm now going to lightly tighten the bolts evenly with minimal torque. And the reason is that I don't want to squeeze all of the gasket maker out from the mating surface. My plan is to let it set up first and then torque them down several hours later. So here's what it looks like with only a small amount of squeeze out from the gasket maker. If I had torqued them down now, most of it would have been pushed out and the bead would have been a lot more than this, which is not what we want. While it's setting up, I'm going to try and clean the rust and oil from the bottom of the deck. Now this part is of course not necessary, but I hate to say it, it's pretty bad looking down here. Also, since it's oil and not grass, it's pretty easy to scrape off even without any water or degreaser. I'm also going to remove a lot of the rust from the deck as well. If you plan on using a pressure washer, that will work too. Just remember that what's being sprayed off might be oil or rust, which is something you may not want in your grass. Unfortunately, this is where we have to leave this project until the gasket maker sets up and after I get this deck washed off as well. Remember that I checked that the engine worked before doing this sort of repair. However, this would be a great time to replace the engine if you think the original one might be broken or beyond repair. So in the end, we got the engine back together and ready to be retorqued, and after cleaning the mowing deck, we should be ready to put it back on. The only issue is that we haven't serviced the carb just yet, so we'll have to do that before we try to start it. Another reason why this engine could have been leaking oil would have been a crack in the block. Unfortunately, there really isn't a good fix for it, so replacing the engine would have been the best option. So my question is, if you were putting this engine back together, would you have replaced the gasket for the sump, or would you have done what I did and just used a gasket maker instead? Personally, I don't want to pay for and have to wait for the gasket to arrive, and the second reason is that I bought the gasket maker so I didn't have to use a paper gasket anymore. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.